We've got a Microsoft O-Day in the wild and a massive update from Adobe. Let's get into it at the Patch Report. Hello everyone, I am Dustin Childs, Head of Threat Awareness here at Trend Micro Zero Day Initiative. And this is the patch report for December 2024. We've got a massive update from Adobe, but the good news is there's nothing under active attack there. Smaller, but a big December update from Microsoft with one exploit. So let's get into it. Let's talk about it. Here we go. So 16 patches from Adobe, 167 CVEs, I think. I, I counted twice. I hope that's the correct number. The biggest of these is an experience manager with 91 CVEs. That's wild. Good news, only one of those is for code exec. Everything else is cross-site scripting. Uh, Connect is also a very big one. So definitely take a look at that one as well. It got 22 CVEs fixed in it. And then Acrobat is probably the most important one here because that's the one that gets abused most in the wild, but it's a six CVE update there. Only two of those are code execution. So there's a bunch of different things here, people, but the, the key to remember with the Adobe updates, they're all priority three, none are in the wild. None are under active attack, none are publicly known. But boy, if you're running Adobe, start patching. And yes, I patched before I, I did this. So let's move on to Microsoft. Got 71 new CVEs and the usual suspects and uh, a very interesting one that we'll get to in a minute. Bunch of criticals this month, but they're not as critical as you might think. Uh, let's start with the one under active attack and this is a common log file system driver EOP. So that EOP is going to be is being used in the wild and is likely paired with a code execution bug. It'll work like this. So you open something uh, or it, it hits uh, on the EOP, elevates, and then you execute code at system level. It takes over your system, usually found in ransomware. Microsoft doesn't provide any information on how widely this is being used, of course. So just get out there and patch. Next, we have an LDAP RCE, and this is a CVSS of 9.8 which is juicy uh, and it's pretty much going to affect all of your domain controllers and you just have to send a speci specially crafted LDAP call and uh, yeah, so that's a, that's a juicy one. Microsoft has some interesting guidance. They say you can disconnect your domain controller from the internet to mitigate this vulnerability. Well, yes, yes, I suppose that is true, although I don't know how practical that is for most people running domain controllers. Um, just test and deploy. There's a Hyper-V remote code execution, and this is a really good one too, because it allows someone on a guest OS to not only perform uh, actions on the underlying host OS, they could also affect other VMs on that same hypervisor. So this is a really interesting one. If you're running Hyper-V or if you have Hyper-V clients, you need to make sure that this is gonna get patched quickly because uh, again, this is a really neat one and definitely could be used in those hosting environments like Oh, I don't know the web uh, or the, the cloud, as they say. So yeah. Now here's the interesting one, and I'm gonna mispronounce this because I don't know exactly how it was. It's Microsoft Music, and it's an RCE in that. And if you're not familiar with music, and it's pronounced some funky way that I wrote there, that they say, uh, it's, a, uh, it's an AI project. Uh, so with that, it's like, we wondered what an AI bug would look like. Well, it looks like a deserialization bug because apparently, that's what this is. Um, you craft something and by deserializing an object, uh, you get code execution. I don't know how likely this is. I've never heard of music before, so I really don't know how widely it's deployed. Uh, leave a note in the uh, in the comments if you use music or, or you know how it's being used. And uh, let me know if you think it's likely to be attacked in this way. I really don't think so, but hey, AI bugs, neat. Moving down the rest of the uh, Thing here you can see all these criticals now i'll get to these in a moment but most of them are not as critical as you would really think uh, because the likelihood of them being exploited is not very high we also have quite a few that require extra steps beyond just applying a patch those are all going to be your sql server patch i'm sorry your sharepoint not sql shame on me um all of your sharepoint stuff is going to require multiple patches the only good news with that is it doesn't matter what uh, order you apply these patches in. It only matters that you apply all of them. So make sure you're getting all of the patches in all of your SharePoint servers. Otherwise, you are not going to be fully protected. Um, so moving on to the other critical ones, we've got a bunch that deal with remote desktop services. They need to be configured in the gateway role to be exploitable. 
Uh, and we've seen a lot of RDS patches come in over the last few months. We haven't seen any of them be exploited. And same for the messaging queue uh, patches. Again, a remote unauthenticated attacker could send a specially crafted message. Seen a lot of these in the last few months, really in 2024, none have been found in the wild. Uh, LSAS is the same, so it could be triggered by a remote unauthenticated attacker. Technically that makes all of these wormable, but again, we haven't seen any indication that any of these have been re uh, attacked in 2024, despite there being a whole lot of uh, bugs for them. So take that with a grain of salt. 13 other code execs, uh, also, you know, the standard open and own for Office. Uh, there is one that adds a wrinkle into it. Um, so they describe it as a uh, result in the user data becoming unavailable and the preview pane is sort of an attack scenario. So it's not just viewing an email in the preview pane, but it's actually previewing an attachment from the preview pane. So that that's that's it. There's six patches for RAS, but there's a, a lot of uh, uh, preconditions that make it un uh, unlikely to be exploited. There's a bug in DNS that looks really scary, but it requires high privileges. So maybe not so scary, but a good time to audit your privileges to see who can and cannot access your DNS server. Um, and again, I mentioned the SharePoint stuff, multiple, multiple patches. Hate to see it. Catch them all. Um, got a lot of privesque bugs, but these are usually the same thing as uh, what we saw being under active attack, where you have a specially crafted uh, component on a specially crafted program on a system that you run uh, and then boom you get running its system the only uh, weird part here in in all of these bugs is physical access that's right for the mobile bot broadband driver uh, an attacker needs to plug a USB into a system so you have to have physical access Microsoft used to not patch things with physical access but I'm glad they patched this one. So kudos for them. I normally slam them a lot, but uh, you know, good for them on this case. Same goes for the wireless wide area network service, but uh, Microsoft doesn't really say what's needed beyond physical access here. So you have physical access, but I'm not sure if it's plugging in a USB driver or shaking a system three times to the left, two times to the right and slide. Uh, that's what it says. Um, there's a bug in the virtualization based security enclave that allows an attacker to load DLLs into an enclave, which could then be used for a DLL uh, attack. That's kind of neat. Uh, and there's a bug that allows attackers to delete files. You say, why would you put a, a file deletion bug in Privesk, not in denial of service? Well, because you can turn that file deletion into uh, a privilege escalation. And, and how do I know? It's because my colleague Simon Zuckerbron blogged on how to do that exact same thing. Uh, we have just a few info disclosure bugs, and most of those are unspecified leaks of memory, so that's good. SharePoint bugs are an exception. They disclose file content, whatever file content may be. And again, multiple SharePoint patches. Um, there's an info disclosure in File Explorer that's a little bit more disconcerting. It's pretty cool. Um, so there are several caveats to this, such as having a target user initiate a connection, uh, and it doesn't say a connection exactly to where, but if it were to be exploited, you end up with the contents of the user's folder and all of their personal data. So that's kind of neat. Uh, one spoofing bug in Microsoft Fender for endpoint on Android. Uh, not a lot of information on this other than saying you have to install an additional app on your Android device to be affected by this. You need to get the update from the Google Play Store. So take a round to that. And uh, DDoS bug, denial of service bugs as usual. Almost no information from Microsoft, so sad. Um, the only uh, the only caveat here is RDP. So this could be a, a, a attacked by a, an attacker connecting to an RDP server and then sending them a malicious HTTP request. Now here's my problem with Microsoft. Oh, what does it result? Did they just say a DOS? Well, does that mean a blue screen? Does that mean it reboots? Will the system recover if the attack stops? Inquiring minds want to know, please Microsoft, just give us a little bit of information. Uh, and finally, there is one new advisory this month. It's a de defense in debt update for Office and specifically Project 2016. But Microsoft provides no further details other than that. So that is it. A smaller December release overall, but a whole lot to deal with, especially for Adobe folks. And uh, yeah, another active attack in the wild. So we're really seeing a lot out there. Uh, our next update will be January 14th, and I will actually be in Tokyo for Pwned Own Automotive. But fear not. I will be awake in the middle of the night, Tokyo time, 
to do my analysis and record this video from the lovely confines of my hotel room. So until then, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, uh, Merry whatever you celebrate. If you don't celebrate anything, go have a Festivus for the rest of us. Until then, stay safe and may all your reboots be smooth and clean.